Hey everybody, this is Emily with Simple Booth. I'm gonna walk you through the web dashboard for the core software plan. This is our new mid-level personal plan. So upon logging in through our website, you will see this landing page. You'll see any recently uploaded photos, any recently updated galleries, and you'll get some quick totals over here. If you click on your username, this drop-down menu will appear. So there's a quick link to manage your account. It will confirm the plan that you are on and when that expires. And you'll get some quick links to licenses and billing. So if I click on manage account, it takes me to my account details. If you ever need to update the email address on the account, let us know. We'll take care of that for you. You can also change your password on this page as well. Our public profile feature allows you to display any public galleries with 15 photos or more. You can fully customize this. You can also turn it off. This is what my profile looks like currently, and people will be able to access this through your online galleries. So I have an action button, website link, and if I click promote, I can copy this HTML code and embed it onto my website so that then I can showcase all of those photos there too. So I scroll back up, hop over to billing. This again confirms the plan that you're on. You can enter billing information here. Uh, virtual booth credits is showing up, but it's actually not available on this plan. Then you have quick links to payment methods and invoices if you were to subscribe through our website. All right, let's hop over into presets. So with a preset, this is where you will customize the user experience and what the photos will look like. Galleries, on the other hand, are where all those photos will live and where people will be sharing their photos from. So let's create a new preset. So the preset name is not publicly visible. It's typically your event or venue name. This is what you'll be choosing when you launch the app on the iPad. After you name your preset, you'll choose your capture type, which for the core plan, you will choose physical on your iPad since virtual is not available. All right, so now it's going to have us create the basic settings for the gallery. So you can create a new gallery, you can copy a gallery, or you can use an existing gallery. The gallery name is publicly visible and will also be included when the gallery is shared as well. So something to keep in mind there. And then the gallery name and any hashtags that you include will be embedded on Facebook and Twitter posts. Um, you can add multiple here, as you can see, there's about an 8590 character limit there. So we have three different privacy levels for the galleries. So with a public gallery, anyone can see the gallery and it may be listed on public pages. There's going to be a gallery opt-in screen that pops up and asks people if they're okay with their photo being viewable by others. With unlisted, the gallery is not listed on public pages and only people with a link to the gallery can view it. That same gallery opt-in screen is going to pop up there. With private, only the owner of the gallery can view it when signed in. So all the photos will be automatically marked as private. So that gallery opt-in screen is not going to pop up that option. I'm going to go with public, turn off the Simple Boost logo, and then hit create. So after I hit create, it takes me back into the preset settings. So you can switch up the preset name here by clicking on this and hitting done. You can also switch up the gallery from this page. Our interaction section is the first one we come to with touchless being the first option. Uh, you can turn this on, of course, to allow people to use hand gestures to control the booth. There are quite a few features unavailable if you do, so something to keep in mind there. Then you get right into photo design. At the bottom of this section is our design guide. So it's helpful to have this open in another tab so that you can come in here and refer to all of the sizing requirements for logos, overlays, and margins, backgrounds, green screen, and more. All right, so you'll also see the recommended size listed underneath these sections too, so that can be helpful to keep an eye on. So the first thing you get to choose is the image type. So we have motion, so live GIF. GIF, rebound, video, single, two by two, one and two, and then photo strips. With live GIF, GIF, rebound, and single, you can allow participants to choose between those four options. Uh, right now, we can't add others into that choose layout feature, so it would just be those four. You can, of course, turn this off if you want to make it a super simple experience. 
So after you choose that, then you'll choose the crop. So you can do no crop. Uh, you can take pictures in portrait or landscape, depending on the iPad orientation. And we also offer a square and a circle crop. Here you can set up your default filter. So you can choose from any of these options. Also show you some edit tools where you can allow people to choose their own filter among other things. Here you can add some margins around the photo. You can round off the corners of those margins. All depends on the look that you're going for. Here you can upload a logo. So let me here, here we go. So the logo will be inserted around the photo. You can switch up the logo position here. So bottom, middle, side, and top. Uh, we also have the option for an overlay. So the overlay would be inserted on top of the photo. So you would want to make sure that you do remove the background of your graphic and download it as a transparent file. Uh, you can show the overlay during capture. This can be helpful depending on your design. Just keep in mind that the photo and the overlay graphic will be mirrored. Um, so if you think that'll throw people off, then maybe leaving it off is a better option. Here you can upload a graphic to fill in the margins background. I'll we'll just fill in those margins that I created. Uh, you can also do a solid color. So if you prefer maybe to go with black or any other color we have to offer, you can do that here as well. And then you can click on this to see it a little closer. Um, you can also download this if you wanna like use this to help create graphics and Canva, Adobe, whatever you might be using. All right, keep moving right along. Uh, so here you can choose the color of the app as people are using it. Um, this will affect the color of the start screen and of the edit screen. So just go with black background color and white text. You can choose a color scheme as well, so light or dark. With camera and countdown, it will default to these settings. So the front facing camera of the iPad showing a get ready prompt on the screen to give people a heads up. Countdown seconds will appear on the screen and then you can set up a delay. So you can adjust these as needed based on your use case. So we do offer chroma key here. So if you have a physical green screen uh, set up behind photo booth participants, then you can come in and set this up so you can upload your graphics. So after you turn it on, which you'll want to make sure you do, and then leave it on, it's going to ask you to upload a background image. I'll use this one as an example. Uh, then you can upload all of your background images. We have green or blue for key color, and you'll see recommended sizes for those green screen graphics here. So you'll want to pay special attention to those, and we have more information about setting up a green screen here as well. All right, so now we've covered appearance and photo capture as well. So now we're in the photo editing section. So this is where you can turn on editing tools for people to be able to edit their own photos. So here you can turn on margin color, crop, props, shuffle around the order of the photos, apply a different GIF speed, and uh, stickers is actually only available on the next plan up, um, but it's here to entice you. Uh, and you can also turn on filters as well. So filters are very popular and props are as well. So with props, you can go in and browse all the dif these different packs that we have to offer. So as you can see, we have some different themes. Uh, you can also come up here and click edit, and then you can see all of the props that we have. All right, after you set up your editing tools, you get to the sharing section here. So these are all the send options that are available for people to receive their photos. So you can set it up via email, text message, QR code, we have a print button you can turn on and an auto print feature as well. So if you turn on print button, this print design section will show up and you'll also get a print preview over here. So you can upload your overlay, a background, set up your paper size, and we have a ton of information in our help center about printing and how to format prints. All right, uh, so these are some additional save options that are available to you. So all of the photos will be stored within your Symbol Booth account 
in your galleries, which we host for you. That's part of your subscription. Uh, but you can also save to Dropbox or to the camera roll as well. With the camera roll, I do recommend clearing that off as soon as possible. It just fills up the storage space on the iPad super fast. And with Dropbox, as you can see, you'll just need to be logged in on that iPad. All right, that is everything in the preset settings. I am gonna hop back over to this general presets page. I wanted to show you this actions dropdown. You have the ability to copy a preset, archive a preset after your event is passed, and also delete one if it doesn't have any photos in it. All right, let's go over to galleries. So here you can see um, all of the galleries from your different events. I'm gonna delete this one, it was a test I did earlier. So you have the same sections here, all active and archived. So if you archive one using that actions dropdown, it's just going to move over here into this section so you can still access it. So if I click on the gallery name, it takes me back into the settings uh, so I can finish customizing those. Uh, here, as you can see, you have a description that you can add. The gallery description shows up in the metadata for your gallery, like when it's shared and a preview is shown on social media. Uh, with images, you can turn off showing the Simple Booth logo. You can turn on showing profile ads, and this would be for your public profile that we looked at earlier. And then with live feed, you can project photos in real time during your event. This is a really cool way to get people engaged, and you can customize these settings here. Right, so now we can go in and can view our gallery. So this is what the gallery looks like currently. So you've got um, our logo showing up here, then you've got your gallery name. This is a link to your public profile. Photos will show up here as they are taken. You can start a live feed by clicking play here. You can promote a single gallery by copying the HTML code and embedding it onto your website. And if you click edit, it will take you right back into your gallery settings. All right, uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is this. So this is where you can set up your default gallery privacy settings. So I actually automatically set mine to unlisted because I knew I wanted that option. So you can do the same just kind of based on what level works best for you. Okay, so that is everything in the web dashboard. Uh, the only thing we didn't cover is this link to our online store um, where you can shop for Halo hardware and add on units as needed. All right, if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. And thanks so much for your time today.